Now, in this video, we are going to talk about alchemical transformations. Alchemical transformations are a kind of, as the name says, transformations in which we create or annihilate a series of atoms or molecules that we call a, a alchemical molecules or atoms inside a system. And the interesting thing is that with these transformations, we are not going to sample the grand canonical ensemble. It's not a particle insertion method. We are still sampling the canonical or the isobaric, isothermal ensemble. So in general, the number of particles will stay constant. How are we doing it? Quite easily. We are going to scale the interactions between our alchemical molecule and the rest of the system, but only the interactions, not the mass, not the velocity of our particle that we are going to annihilate or create. And therefore, simply by, for example, annihilating it, we pass from interacting alchemical molecule to a alchemical molecule that is in a pure gas phase, because it doesn't interact with nothing, but it still exists and uh, the rest of the system will remain untouched. And if we create it, so the opposite, we will start from uh, ideal gas, and then we will slowly integrate it in the system and make it interact in the system. So for example, we could have a box of water, some kind of molecule, whatever you like, uh, I don't know, uh, am ammonium, and we could have it in water equilibrated and then we could slowly re eliminate the interactions between ammonium and water and so in the end have wa bulk water with ammonium that is an ideal gas. So if in the beginning in, we have the system that is bound with the alchemical molecule we can go up and down to this system that is still in the bulk phase or solvated phase or whatever we are going to study, plus the alchemical part that is a gas, an ideal gas. So, ideal gas. And we can do it up and down. We can do it in theory with any kind of parameter but the most common choice is to scale separately, because we could use only one parameter, but to scale separately the columbic interactions and the Leonard Jones. That's because columbic interactions can give a bit of problems if left alone without the Leonard Jones. It could make the system quite unstable. So what we usually do is when you annihilate, we will first eliminate the columbic interactions and then the Leonard Jones. When we create, we will first create the Leonard Jones and then the columbic interactions in order to avoid instabilities. Now, if we are using some kind of method where we cannot distinguish the single point charges in order to get the long range columbic interactions, so for example, a smooth particle mesh evil, we will need to put a correction due to the fact that we are scaling the charges, but we're not really able to distinguish the contribution of the charges from the contribution of the rest of the charges the alchemical charges and the normal charges of the system. If lambda is the parameter we use for charges, we will have this alchemical potential, we will have uh, a sum that goes through all the couples of charges, so qi, qaj, so the two charges, one minus, one minus lambda of charge i, depending on t, uh, 1 minus lambda of, of charge j depending on t, and then the error function of alpha rij, the distance between rij, and its and the modulus of rij. Alpha is a parameter. But now, why would we be interested in doing all this? Easy. Some kind of Fourier energy estimates can be do done once you know the work a system has undergone in order to get to go through a transformation. For example, there are the non-equilibrium methods like the Jardzinski or the Crookes theorem. 
So once we are going to calculate the work done to make this transformation through the creation or the annihilation of the system, we will be able to get a free energy estimate. And of course, the interesting thing of alchemical transformations is that as uh, we are not cons we are have no reaction coordinate, we cannot insert any kind of bias through a choose choosing a wrong or a bad reaction coordinate. And as the energy free energy differences are functions are state functions we actually don't need to have a path to follow. The only thing we need to have is a starting and an end point. And so how are you going to calculate the alchemical work done to, on the system? Simple. The infinitesimal alchemical work will be one half energy of lambda plus delta lambda for a certain configuration minus e lambda minus delta lambda for a certain configuration plus the energy of uh, nu so Lambda might be the coefficient we are using for charges and nu the one you are using for linear Jones. The situation is the same. Minus and in this way we are going we are able to calculate the work. The interesting thing of this formula is that we don't need to label molecules or atoms that we are annihilating or creating so we can do things in the same moment without needing to labeling them and it's correct on the second order of my parameters so as said they will go like delta of nu square and o delta of lambda square so as said in this way for example using Krug's or Jasinski theorem we will be able to get the free energy estimate of the free energy difference between before and after the creation or annihilation or whatever. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the sources and the materials I used to do it are written in the description below. And here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comments section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media links in the description and if you would like to support the channel consider to donate on patreon again link in the description below see you next time i'm maurice karnbrook for the computational chemist